All right, the last type of asymptote is called a slant asymptote, and this will only happen if there is no horizontal. And just because there's no horizontal doesn't mean it will happen, but the, if there is a horizontal ap asymptote, this will not happen. Um, but if there is none, then this is possible. Um, so what hap this will happen when P of X is exactly one degree greater. So this could be like X cubed plus X over X squared plus five X plus six or x to the fifth plus 5x plus 1 over x to the fourth plus 2x, right? Exactly one degree. If it's more than one degree, we don't get a slant asymptote. So it's a special case. And a slant asymptote has the form of y equals mx plus b. It's approaching a line. So what we'll do is we'll do long division, and we should get a line as we do the long division. So this next example has a slant asymptote because it's exactly one degree, x to x squared. So we'll do long division. You could do synthetic as well. Um, I'm just gonna do long division because we won't always have linear on the bottom. So let's see. x squared divided by x gives me x. We multiply x squared minus five x and then we subtract. And we get 4x minus 6. We will do 4x divided by x, and we get 4. And we multiply 4x minus 20, and then subtract. And we get 14. So f of x would be the same as x plus 4 plus 14 over x minus 5. 14 over x minus 5. So if you think about plugging in really big numbers for x, the second piece is going to go to 0 when x is really big. And that's what creates a slant asymptote. So my slant asymptote is the x plus 4. So the idea is that the, the remainder is going to approach zero, right? If I plug in like 10 million, that remainder is basically zero. And the graph overall will approach x minus 4, plus 4. So these make funny graphs. Eh, I'll open Desmos later. But you could graph it on Desmos if you're curious. We're going to graph in a couple examples. Yeah, let's do a little bit backwards thinking, and then we can do full-on graphing. So let's find a rational function that satisfies these conditions. I'm gonna kind of sketch it and kind of write out information as I go through. So vertical asymptote at x equals one. So vertical asymptotes are the denominator. So that means I probably have an x minus one in the denominator. Um, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. And remember those are like leading terms. So I would have to have two x, so that two x over two would go to two. And then I need a y, and I need the powers to be the same as well, right? The powers are the same so that we get a horizontal asymptote. And then we know y intercept of 0, 1. So maybe there's like a plus c, right? We don't know what c is. But we want f of 0, 2x minus, oops, c over x minus 1 equals 1. So 2 times 0 plus c over x minus 1 equals 1. So C would be negative one. So my function would be minus one. Is this the only possible solution? No, there's a lot of solutions, but this is one. And that goes right there. So these are tricky because there are so many solutions and we're backwards thinking, but I think it really does help us start thinking about all the pieces of a graph. 
So let's do one full graph and then um, we'll do more in the next video. So let's find intercepts and asymptotes. And then hopefully that's enough information to graph. If not, we can plot a couple points. So let's find the intercepts. We'll start with the easy one by plugging in zero. So plug in zero and we get zero. Zero minus zero over zero minus four. So zero, zero is an intercept. Um, there might be more, this is the y-intercept. X-intercepts are when the function equals zero, um, which for a rational is when the numerator equals zero. So X times X minus five, so we get X equals zero and five. So the other one would be five, zero. I'll just put a graph here that we can slowly fill in. So we have two intercepts. Um, so let's find asymptotes. Let's do um, vertical asymptote first. Vertical asymptote is when denominator is zero. So I think we get what? Two and negative two when we factor that. We'll just slowly sketch those. So we're going to have three pieces. One, two, three. So sometimes students kind of forget about the piece, like maybe the one on the right or the one in the middle. There's three pieces. Um, what's left? Horizontal asymptote. We take the leading terms. So this graph would approach x squared over x squared, which would be 1. y equals 1. And then that's not enough information to graph, right? So maybe I would plot a couple points. Um, my guess is, is I know the bottom piece probably looks like that. And that's because we're not crossing the asymptotes. So that's kind of the only way to make that work. It can't be up here because we already know the intercept is down here. Um, but I don't know anything about the other pieces. So we'll just make a table and plug in. Um, so maybe over here I would do negative four. Um, in the middle, we already found the zero, but maybe I would find negative one and one, right? I'm skipping negative two because it's not in domain. You could do negative three also if you wanted to. We already found zero, zero, positive one. Two, right, is not in domain. And then you could find three or four, but I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty confident over here already. And as you graph more, you'll see why I'm confident. So plug in negative four. Um, so we get negative four squared minus five times negative four. This is just the numerator. Negative four squared minus four. So 36 over 12 is three. So surprisingly, that's enough to graph. So it's up here. Um, and that's because I know it's approaching these asymptotes. So it actually just makes this shape. So the asymptotes tell me the behavior. I just need like one point in between to decide is it doing it up here or is it doing it down here? Those are really the only two things I'm deciding between. Let me make that smoother. So the point tells me that it's doing it on the top. And then the middle can have lots of different shapes. Sometimes it makes cube shapes. Sometimes it makes quadratic shapes. So we'll find a couple points in the middle. So negative 1 squared, which is just 1. I didn't need to do that. Minus 5 times negative 1. So we get 6 on top. And then 1 squared minus 4 is 3. Negative 3. So we get negative 2. Negative one, negative two. So that'll go like this. But now the question is, does this one do this or this? So that's why we need some points. We know we're approaching these asymptotes. So that tells me a lot. Um, so on top for one, we get 
we get 1 minus 5 over 1 minus 4. So we get... Uh, um, negative 4 over 3? No. Negative 4 over negative 3, so positive 4 thirds. So it'll be up here somewhere. So it's going to make like a cubic function. And I know that it makes this shape because, again, it's not cross. These asymptotes are super important. Make them in bright. It tells me a lot of behavior. It tells me it's approaching these asymptotes. So even just a couple points is enough to graph because the graph is approaching these asymptotes. Um, so we'll do a couple more of these in later videos, and you'll probably feel more confident with the fact that I'm only doing a couple points. Um, you can add more points if you want, but you are wasting time. So hopefully after a couple graphs, we'll feel more confident skipping those steps. So I'll see you for the next one.